Back to Metal Rules TV, where the underground meets the playground. And this is our interview with Attacker Part 2. I was just talking about the wild shows, what John was talking about, and uh, I remember the old, the pre-show with the ripping the sheet cushions out and throwing the seat cushions up at the that stage. Great. That was awesome. <laughs> was that red there? Is that Slayer and all that? No, that, that was, was an awesome. awesome square guard. That was, oh, yeah? It was like snow with the seat cushions. Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. But yeah, they banned metal, metal bands for uh, years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they made them play this. And the first the time court. I think that the metal bands went back was when Slayer went to the Felt Forum after that. Because they were still banned from the main right. part of, the, right. of Madison Square Garden because of the pre-show. Because they tore out like thousands of dollars worth of seats. Oh, and Priest refused to, p to pay for it. I think it was like $30,000 worth of seats. So of seats Metallica and the Felt Forum too? When they were just like throwing like flaming seat cushions like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stage and I think shows are way more contained. Yeah, now I think there's, so like, there's, already, a, yeah. there's a circle pit. And I mean, and, and, and there you go. And Yeah. And, and I, like, I remember actually going to like hardcore shows when I was in my 20s. Like going to see Sick of It All and Agnostic Front and everything. And like, apart from like people sla like like all the slamming and the pits and everything, I actually thought those shows were pretty well behaved. I mean, they weren't. It was uh, just, just as weird as everyone would beat the crap out of each other. The lights would go on. Everybody would be like, "Oh, see you later." Yeah, <laughs> and go home. Michael remember back in the more days when I was when we were like nineteen and people were in the pit. I mean, me and my buddies would go in the pit and, and people would like literally kill each other in the pit. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean that was back in you know, the, in like eighty five or something, eighty six. <laughs> It was crazy, you know, the pit was, was sick. If I you guess know, went in there, you, you, you risk getting hurt. You I really guess did. people have become a lot more civilized about their substance abuse. Yeah. There, and, uh, <laughs> I, think, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I think so, too. Definitely a positive thing. Except for those bath salts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a whole other issue. Yeah. 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 It's a problem. <laughs> Bite somebody's face off, ain't it? That's shit. Now, uh, now, recently, uh, this is off the subject, but obviously, but... Uh, I was reading Iced Earth that they were doing like a three hour set in like, was it Greece? We were talking about it, do you remember, Brian? It's like an island near Greece. Cyprus? Yeah. Yeah, in Cyprus. They're doing a three hour set. What do you guys think is a good amount of, like, I thought that was too fucking long. I, I would think so too. too. I was what do you guys think is a good amount of time? What, what would you make a perfect concert timing for you? What do you probably, think? Probably not. You know, it's honestly, probably. Two hours, might, depending on who, if you really love the band, sometimes that's even too much. Yeah. Probably like 90 minutes is a, is a good. A good set because even when you love a band, sometimes you sit there and it's like, all right, you know, they, they may go through some songs you don't like, and you know, you're sitting there waiting till the end to get to what you know the best stuff is. So I'd say for me, ninety minutes is probably better. Mm. Let's yeah. 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 two hours. For me. Take what do we do? Like last set, like eighteen songs, something. Like yeah, we did like right? almost an hour and a half set. We yeah, which is perfect. Way. We, we were satisfied. Right. Right. more than that. Like, it's too much. It's true. Yeah, it does. I mean, people, you watch on the show, you do get the attention span. Yeah. It's like gone by that time, and you want to hold the crowd. You're better off hitting them hard, yeah. get in, get out, and leave them, yeah, leave them wanting yeah. more, not being like, when are these guys going to end? I want to go to sleep. <laughs> not a lot of banter in 10 minutes in between each encore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, what is, um, what is, what is your, your, the thing you look for in a woman? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I'm a woman. Yeah. Oh. Who's answering this one? Asking the wrong guy. Who's answering this one? <laughs> I thought I'd take it. Pat, take this one. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's the married one. <laughs> I'm not really married. I'm practically married. I tell you what, it'd be nice to find somebody that just knows how to chill, hang out, no drama, no you know, no expectations of stuff, just kind of like. Hang out and enjoy each other and that's it. whatever. That's that's it. Someone you know, that just lets you be yourself. That's exactly. Well. Just you let know, you be. That's like my wife. Yeah, exactly. What somebody else really wants is one, one psychotropic medication maximum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, we're you, you have to look at the medicine that's cabinet. Important. Yeah. Me, but me, it's uh, my my girlfriend Betty is like cool because she loves horror movies, and we can hang out together. We can just get along. No matter, even if we get into a fight, we're over it. We always forgive each other and forget. Nobody holds grudges. We hang out. We watch horror movies. We do our thing, and she does her thing. I do my thing, and you know, no drama. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. If you can find somebody like that, you spend the rest of your life with them. Really, I mean, coming up on five years and stuff. Do not keep so. looking. And there's swingers too. <laughs> swingers. We know some swingers. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, in all actuality, that wasn't actually my question. I just asked my question, and I couldn't read my own handwriting. <laughs> but now I actually realize what I actually my question actually was, and it's what is the biggest change you've ever made for a woman? You know how some people do stuff, 
where they change because the woman wants them to like what's the biggest change you've made in your life or thing you've done for a woman I've never maybe changed for slow a down partying <laughs> giving, yeah. her all, giving her all my money yeah <laughs> having to hang out with her family oh. that always sucks That's yeah. Yeah. I say so you have to find a woman who will accept you for who you are and will not want to change you personally I would never change for a woman just like my wife Find she likes me just how I am, it. perfectly. Well, let's see, I'm divorced. Yeah, sure I do. Perfect <laughs> and, uh, Perfect uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's why I didn't change anything, so. <laughs> yeah, I got about six answers for that, but I'm not even going to say anything. Because <laughs> no, yeah, there's no editing, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right, there is no editing. <laughs> now, um, there's a lot of bands out there, you know, doing the power metal thing and true metal and uh Which bands do you think are, like, influenced by you? Do you hear bands out there that you think that, that copped your sound, either now or then? Tell you the truth, I don't really know. I mean, I mean, you know, we I've met people in Europe that have said, uh, you know, that they they love, you know, like the first album or the second album, and they kind of did influence them. But you know, it's I mean, I, I don't really hear anybody per se, you know, directly. I mean, not, not that I can think of that. Yeah, they sound like us. So, me, no. Anybody else? Right. I've only been in a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the last uh, forty-five days, have anything happened? Hey, you caught my sound. <laughs> I don't speak in person. I, I've been influenced by a lot of other bands. I can honestly say. Would you like to cite them? Well, in the first order. bands that I that I grew up on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, spelled backwards. Actually, uh, I grew up on like uh, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, uh, Kiss, Sabbath, Ozzy, and then I got into the you know new wave of British heavy metal. You know. Around eighty eighty one, and it was, uh, you know, it was like going up to Johnny Z's at, at uh, Rock and Roll Heaven and getting stuff like Witchfinder General and Anvil Saxon, you know, uh, the you know an Armored Saint EP and buying a Metal Massacre. That's the first time I ever heard Attacker. I'm an I'm an Attacker fan. I'm in the band now, so you know that, that it just kind of like that me, movie Rockstar. Gives, yeah, yeah, exactly. Gives me goosebumps. You're because, because, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I'm, I'm not even Let's kidding. Let's call Ripper on the phone right now. Get him on. <laughs> well. I'm not even kidding about that, but really, I mean, I love these guys. I always did, you know. They, they, when I first heard "Call on the Attacker" at my buddy Jerry's house, his brother turned the song to it. You know, back in uh, what '85, '86, it was around there, right? Uh, well, it came out before that. But it depends uh, on like when, '84. It depends on when you heard it. Though. Battle at Helm's Deep came out in '86, 80, I think. '85. '85, right? Yeah. I was, I was mm -hmm. in the area. We'll quiz you on the history later. Yeah. <laughs> You're fired. But <laughs> anyway, you failed the trivia test. I loved I love these guys, man. You know, and uh, they were always good. You know, in every incarnation, every every album I like. You know, and uh, it was it's great to be in the band. So, you know, that's cool. just me personally. But I was influenced influenced by you know mostly, like I said, Dio, Sabbath, Priest. You know, early Deep Purple. Because uh, I'm old. Special. <laughs> you, you, yes, and by the way, you do light up on camera. You're right. Uh, what? You do. You light up on camera. Oh. <laughs> You're all quiet when you eat your pizza and you light up like a Christmas tree now. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What were you guys doing in the 90s? Uh, absolutely nothing at all. We, we pretty much... Well, a after Attacker, we, you know, Mike, Mike and I were in uh, Jersey Dogs, Dogs man. Okay. You know, uh, for, that was, and that was probably till about 93. And after that, pretty much... We, we didn't do you know anything really until probably I guess it was about 2000 when the whole attacker thing uh, kind of got going again, and that was because our original guitar player from Battle at Helm's Deep, Jim Mooney, had passed away, <coughs> and we decided to do another album and dedicate it to him. That's kind of when everything got rolling again. But other than during the 90s, we just watched a lot of Seinfeld and Friends, and that was about it. Oh, good. You know? <laughs> what, uh, what do you say is? I, I never really knew the difference between true metal and power metal. Do you, do, what is the difference? Well, say? well, the thing power metal, what they, I think a lot of people consider it, is like that rhapsody type stuff and like oh. the keyboardy, you know, Camelot. You no, know, that's what they call power metal. My personal opinion is, if it's got keyboards and it's very orchestral, that's not power. That's mm -hmm. you know, no. yeah. to me, it's and the, the true yeah. metal, I guess, would be the bands like ourselves that play, you know, metal that's more based on like Priest, Maiden, like the, you know, those kind of bands. You know what I mean? It's a uh, that's more true metal, but the the whole power metal label, I, I don't really agree with what, what they call power metal. Do you know who coined the term power metal? Seriously, the band Exciter from Canada. 
the and they're not and they're not power metal. They they were power metal back then in eighty one. Like like like. Uh, well, I guess what what that version of power metal was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Back then, <laughs> Heavy Metal Maniac came out. That was power metal. It was a three piece stripped down sound with speed. And loud guitars and screaming vocals, and that was that was what was called power. Outside metal. of that, more thrash metal. They were they were bored, but they were called yeah. themselves power metal. They were thrash. Think of, think of thrash. bands like think of like they had slow thing. parts too. When you talk about when you tell a younger kid, uh, uh, they use the term hardcore. They don't think of hardcore like Chromags. They think they think hardcore right. is like uh, just the bands with the corn monster vocals and stuff or, or something like that. Yeah. It's a different thing. Like when they said into hardcore, it's not the same Carvel thing. Vocals. <laughs> or or Tom Carvel vocals. Or Tom Carvel vocals. Yeah. <laughs> You remember Tom Carvel, yeah. right? I like his cookie cake. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cookie, cookie push. Cookie push. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen well, years we well. well. fifteen years we try to tell you how fresh Carvel ice cream is made yeah. out of it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, you're looking at it. Chocolate fudge. <laughs> On that note, we'll be back in one minute. <laughs>